advances in technology affect the lives of all Australians. For some people, technological change and the rate at which it occurs means anxiety and frustration. Others see new careers, directions, ambitions, benefits. Technological change is occurring rapidly in the banking industry, and banking is something that affects us all. have always experienced changes in technology. The first bank in Australia, the Bank of New South Wales, opened its doors in 1817. It was empowered to issue notes, grant loans and receive deposits. And over the next few years, a number of other banks followed suit. The gold rush days of the 1850s played an important part in increasing consumer demand for banking services. In the early days of banking, things were fairly primitive. All transactions were recorded manually, and communication about all aspects of banking was by handwritten letter. These were sent from the branch to head office, by overland coach, and even overseas by ship. In the late 19th and early 20th centuries, technological innovations were introduced slowly. The letterpress, typewriter, overland telegraph, adding machine and check sorting machines all helped to change the banking process. Banks became more automated to meet an increasing volume of transactions and banking today bears little resemblance to banking of the past. Customers still have to queue up at the counter, but these days there are electronic machines available to process and record each transaction. Most branches are connected to a centralised electronic data processing centre, which processes, stores and retrieves information about all transactions. This relationship between branches and the centralised computer has led to changes in the nature of jobs. For example, ledger machinists have become input operators, which involves inputting rather than posting information directly to a customer account. In addition to electronic innovations, a whole range of mechanical aids has enabled the banking industry to handle even larger volumes of transactions. Banks compete actively with one another and with other non-bank financial institutions, such as building societies and credit unions. And in order to attract customers, banks must now offer a much wider range of facilities and services. The most recent impact of technology on banking has been the introduction of the automatic teller machines, which make withdrawals, accept deposits, transfer money between accounts, and provide up-to-date account balances, both during and outside normal business hours. Well, that sounds simple enough. Let's see. In goes the card. Right. Key in the number. Tell it what I want to do, withdraw cash. What I want to withdraw it from, bank card. How much I want. That's OK. Press the button and uh, out comes the money. Lovely. Just what I wanted. Fifty dollars. But how do people feel about dealing with the machine? If I want something complicated or want something explained, it's better inside. But just for cash or get a balance, it's quicker to go here. Much more convenient. It's a lot quicker. You don't have to queue up. And I haven't got time, really. I'm sort of <laughs> just zipping down from work to put some money in and take some out. Beats queuing up. I suppose if you want to be uh, 
critical of the whole thing. It's going to do someone out of a job. Um, but other than that, I suppose with the, the modern world, the way it is, it's wages and so forth. You've got to try and cut your costs as best you can um, and become more efficient in your business. I use it because it's a lot more convenient than the branches. It's a lot quicker and easier. I've had many opportunities or many occasions over since the introduction of the night and day bank where I've had the facility of uh, quick access to money. Uh, I've never been let down once. Uh, it's always given me out the right money, although mind you, one of these days I'm rather hoping that it might give me a little bit more. Bank card is a multi-purpose charge card that lets consumers buy goods and services from a range of shops and businesses on presentation of this plastic card and the signing of a sales voucher. Your bank pays for what you buy now, and you pay your bank after you get your monthly bank card statement. Over three million Australians now use bank card. How do traders feel about the different ways customers pay for the goods and services they purchase? New technology, of course, always brings bank card up as a uh, marvellous thing for all the customers that they can come into the plastic economy and uh, use a piece of card and get their goods. Well, from a retail point of view, it's, uh, it's quite satisfactory for us because we actually have the payment guaranteed for the normal small fee or the fee that the bank charges. Oh, credit card is, I think, increases the retailer's turnover. I think that people who have a credit card see something they want and may not have the cash or may not have budgeted for it in this particular week, except the principal of the credit card are spreading payments over a long period and they will buy immediately rather than perhaps put it off for a couple of months. And People tell me that they can take advantage of specials in the store when they see them rather than uh, miss out on them. Oh, I think we're on the, uh, most retailing is on the uh, brink of uh, some rather dramatic changes over the next few years and some of them I suppose could be quite frightening but uh, certainly I would think in the grocery line or in the supermarket chain uh, where you're shopping for basic items that, that will possibly one day be done via a video screen in your own home direct to the a store of your choice and uh, you may never have to go to a supermarket, you may be able to do it all from home. It has been argued that technological change has replaced boring, repetitive work with interesting, skilled jobs. On the other hand, it's also been argued that it's merely replaced one kind of routine work with another, a kind that requires fewer people into the bargain. If I were ever to go back to the branches, I would look at that case with the output in a and a fresh new light, because I've seen the, the work that goes in, I've seen the extra effort that's been put in by the girls here when things go wrong, when, and even with computers things do go wrong on occasion, systems tend to go down. I've seen people working virtually around the clock just to make sure that that case gets itself back to the branch. And uh, I don't think that the, the people in the branches really realise what's involved in the data operation. They tend to turn around and say, it's going to go to the computer, the worker's going to go to the computer, but they don't realise uh, that 150 or 160 people work to get that information into the computer. I think the, perhaps the human element of the computer should be stressed a lot more than it is. You'd have to be very foolish to make predi predictions in the computer industry purely and simply because the technical boffins tell me that uh, it's the field is moving so fast that the new machinery we're installing now is already out of date. So things will change. Now, one of the ways in which I would speculate would be that in the future you're going to get computer terminals in the branches. Uh, the situation that you'll get is the staff dividing up perhaps into two streams. Uh, you'll get your frontline staff which will deal directly and interact directly with the customer. Uh, they'd be more sales orientated and you would get the technical support staff in the background providing the necessary backup for the technical staff. Our technology's got to be a good thing. Uh, there are so many new services coming up and uh, so many opportunities opening up that uh, uh, it's, it's something that's imperative. I think the bank needs the technology and uh, also the technology needs the bank. I think the two of them just naturally marry. The Australian Banking Employees Union is not opposed to the implementation of technological changes within the industry. Its main concern is the rate at which these changes are being implemented and the effects upon customers and the bank staff. Technology as such has had a significant effect on job opportunities in that it has de-skilled a great number of people within bank branch systems 
and uh, those opportunities for people to join the employment in banking and move up into skilled posts is reduced. Banking over particularly the last 10 years has changed to the extent that 10 years ago when one walked into a bank branch there was a ledger machinist, there was a girl in the branch who could uh, do shorthand for the manager. Now both of those jobs have completely disappeared out of a bank branch and that uh, duties in banking today really relate to taking information across the counter, feeding it into a computer and then checking the information as it comes out of the computer. Working conditions will change dramatically. Uh, the introduction of shift work and the introduction of people processing paper in uh, computer centres has meant uh, the use of uh, visual equipment such as uh, screen equipment, which has brought eye strain and uh, health problems. The use of uh, proof machine keyboard uh, work within the data centres, the computer centres, has brought uh, injuries such as tenosynovitis, which are lasting injuries and uh, which are quite serious from a union point of view. It does have an effect on numbers. Overall, the opportunities uh, for recruitment will re reduce. Technology uh, means that the greatest cost for banking, that is staff, will be significantly reduced by uh, machine operations, which will do more work at a less cost overall. The view of the banking industry is that the introduction of new technology has in no way jeopardised the employment prospects of staff. They're not even worried about this happening in the future because, they say, staff are now being redeployed into providing a wider range of services to the customer. Yes, the structure of banking and the opportunities for staff have changed quite substantially over the last 15 years with the development of technology. The tedium has gone out of banking to a very marked degree. New opportunities have opened up for bank staffs to move into the computer field, to move into specialised lending fields, specialised deposit fields, and to handle the myriad of new services that the banks have been able to introduce because they have introduced technology developments. For instance, when banks moved from ledger keepers to computers, then to online computers, and then now with the automatic telling machines, there's a whole range of new types of work which are more interesting than the old paper handling that bank staff used to have to cope with on a day-by-day -day basis many years ago. The end of technological developments is not yet in sight. Now, the banks have been developing technological changes since 1962, and between 1962 and 1972, banks computerised, and today they're only changing the system of computerisation by adding software or peripheral equipments to make it more efficient. The next step, of course, and nobody knows when that will be, well, when we go further into the electronic fund transfer systems. There's been experiments being conducted in France, there's experiments being conducted in Belgium, there's experiments being conducted in the United States. Nothing is conclusive yet, but the technological capacity is there for people in their own homes to do their own banking from their own homes. But there's a lot of ifs and buts associated with that. And I would venture the opinion that is some years off yet before either the banks could introduce it in Australia or more importantly, before the community is ready for home banking of that type. A recent experiment in the small French town of Bourg-en-Brest may be an indication of things to come. A new form of credit card called the MOA card has been introduced. Over a hundred retail organisations have their own terminals linked directly to the bank's central computer. A customer can make a purchase with the card and the terminal can then make an instant deduction from the account and transfer the money directly into the account of the retailer. No cash is required and the transaction will not take place if there are no funds in the customer's account, so it's impossible to build up large debts. This system operates at a tenth the cost of the checkbook system. We've seen rapid changes in banking in the past. What does the future hold for the industry, the employees and the customers? I think the first thing to understand is that the banking industry itself over the next 20 years is going to be under a tremendous amount of pressure. Uh, pressure from building societies and credit unions uh, to make profit. 
at the moment the bank's cost structures uh, by and large are quite high so they will have to take whatever action they can to reduce their costs that means that the banks will have to adopt whatever technology they can to keep their costs down simply so that they can survive having said that no changes happen overnight and i think the banks at the moment are planning to uh, simply stop the flow of paper uh, which has been growing at a rapid rate right uh, throughout the history of the banks. Particularly, they're interested to stop the flow of cheques, which is mounting at such a rapid rate uh, that they're having difficulty coping with it. So we don't expect that there is going to be an instant uh, reversal in employment trends in the bank. We do see that uh, there will probably be no increase in the number of people employed in the banking sector, but we don't see it dramatically declining. Uh, for the last hundred years, the banks have been losing share in the total finance market. Back in 1850, they had almost 100% of the total finance market. By 1950, uh, that was down to uh, about 60%, and in 1980, it's down to about 50%. We expect that share to continue to fall. What that means is that uh, the other financial institutions, the building societies, the credit unions and others, have become very formidable competitors. Particularly, they have opened up uh, modern retail branch uh, networks. They've had a more modern image. They've focused on effective, uh, high technology systems. So their costs are low. They've been able to offer a better deposit rates and also better lending rates. So they've certainly given the banks something to think about. We do believe, however, uh, that the banks will respond uh, by themselves introducing new technology, improving their branch network, uh, and making things better for the customer. This centre is a testing ground for new technology. Some of this equipment will be operating in branches in the near future, although some is still very much in the developmental stage and may not be introduced for a number of years. The next 10 years may see enormous changes in the way that banks handle our money. One day, doing the banking may be as simple as picking up a phone from home. Hello. Yes, my personal ID number is 161232. I'd like you to transfer $300 from my savings account to my bills account and to use it to pay the gas and electricity bills which will probably be coming in over the next 10 days or so. Thank you. Bye. 